Okay, my friends, I'm going to make this pretty quick. Space is destroying astronauts' red blood cells. They're going into space, and it's giving them iron deficiency anemia, IDA. Now, if we can figure out what's wrong with them, we can fix the people here on Earth, too. They're all seeming to get this when they go to space, and it's pretty serious, because if they want to stay up there a long time, they're not going to make it. They're just they're going to be too tired, and they cannot figure out what's causing it. They're not looking at the bacteria, I don't think. Now, I am focusing in on gut issues, gastrointestinal issues, which normally create these bacteria strains and, and keep you healthy through that immune response. But however, it ne doesn't necessarily have to be a GI issue with these astronauts. I don't know what is causing those red blood cells to be dying off, but I suspect it is some form of bacterial issue that's not being protected by a good bacterial colony that's supposed to live in the cell membranes. And every cell in your body has a membrane around it, and every membrane there is, is patrolled and maintained by bacteria. If the bacteria is not in that red blood cell, I don't care what it is, if it's caused by GI issues, I don't know. Do they have GI issues too? But these are the things we have to find out. I can't it, it, it contribute it to GI issues, but if we can figure out what's missing and replace it, we can get around this, I think. But we have to replace it with the bacteria, not just give them more iron. Okay, like I say, I study the gastrointestinal system and what bacteria affect what problems you have because literally almost every condition there is is associated to a gastrointestinal issue and the issue in the gastrointestinal system causes the disease not the other way around they say the disease causes you to have such and such a problem no it's that's backwards and this is another issue GI conditions that lead to this um, um, malabsorption of the iron iron deficiency now, these are all the different, these are GI issues. These are in your gut. Why is that bothering your blood? They thought your blood was a sterile condition, sterile area. It's not. Now they finally realized just a couple of years ago, no, it's not sterile. It's loaded with bacteria. You see this? Doctors are fighting back against this. The healthy human blood microbiome. Fact or fiction? Yes. Everything is controlled by bacteria. Your blood just doesn't do all this stuff accidentally. Something's controlling it. They, they, can't, they just can't get this. If blood goes through your veins and arteries, performs numerous functional ascensions to our survival. Now, in 1960, they discovered that there was different entities in your blood that weren't associated to your blood. They called them, I can't remember the names, but maybe monocytes, I can't remember. But they they aren't part of your blood and they just say oh those are just dormant things laying around they don't do anything and if you get blood has bacteria in it that means you're sick now they realize no that's not the case they said uh, here it is since human blood traditionally been considered to be entirely sterile comprising only of blood cells platelets and plasma detection of microbes in blood was consistently interpreted as an indication of infection. Well, now they realize that is not the case. If you don't have the right bacteria in your blood, and this is, I'm, I'm just speculating at this moment, but this can be easily tested. We can test to see what bacteria is there before they go to space, what bacteria is there when they come back. Simple as that. They just didn't realize that there was human blood microbiome. And they're still fighting against it. They say there's, there's all kind of opposition to to allow on this to be studied because they you know all these people say, oh there's nothing to figure out forget the whole thing forget the whole thing no well and it goes this is quite long uh let's see let's get down to the conclusion if we can ever get there hold on <laughs> all right here we go right there hud uh, um the human blood microbiome related studies, we conclude that the notion that a healthy, non-diseased human blood microbiome exists and cannot simply be 
discard it. And that's what they want to do. Ah, don't look at that stuff. That's crazy. This is the problem with the, the medical society and the science in general. They dismiss everything out of hand with vengeance. You have to be honest. This is new to me, too. I didn't think the blood had all that bacteria loaded in there, either. But they've known about this since 1960 and just decided, ah, oh, it's nothing. Forget about it. And they say, they say don't research it. Just stay away from that stuff. Well, I can't understand why they won't allow research into areas that are promising. It says right here, we furthermore encourage researchers to investigate this unique microbiome as it promises to hold the potential to facilitate both the diagnosis and improved understanding of the onset of numerous human diseases. It's time to start doing our work as scientists. And it could be gut diseases because it's saying space travel can make the gut leaky. It affects, they say it's microgravity on the intestinal epithelial cells. But th those cells are maintained by bacteria. So what is actually happening? We have to determine, is the bacteria changing? And I believe it will be. Now, I have a ton of information for NASA right now, but the first thing they have to do is to get, collect the information about the bacterial species that live in all of these areas in your body, 100% of the, of the body. We have to map this out, and then we can get past this disease issue. After they come back from their missions, they repeat the same thing. And you collect all that same stuff, and then you compare what happened. What was the differences? It's not rocket science. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. NASA, get a hold of me. I'm telling you right now, I can help you, my brothers. This is We have been working on this for years, and we've cured people that were considered incurable. And there was a person that was just cured after two-plus years of excruciating, violent infection. And then after 30 days, was perfectly cleared by putting six little times they put the right bacteria into the infected areas, and it it reestablished itself and the person was per perfect. After two years, they, they, they said, there's nothing we can do. They said, well, let's just try it. And they put this with phages. Phage therapy is like an injector therapy. And this is sort of new, very new actually, <laughs> very, very new. But it, it cured this person. It was absolutely phenomenal. I don't know if I showed you this or not, but this is about anemia and iron deficiency in gastrointestinal conditions. We need to fix this here on Earth just as much as we do on space. Now, I had just done this about this special phage therapy clears a patient's resistant infection after 798 days. Now, you should come up here to uh, my channel and probacteria therapy and the incurable. This is things that they have not have understood before. And now they're starting to understand how these phages can inject back in stuff into your membranes and hopefully reestablish the missing bound bacteria. Because if you just keep taking supplements, that's okay if it keeps you going. But better is to bind those supplements into your body so you don't have to do it. That's what the natural human immune system is is these all these bugs are just in that lining and they're just waiting to attack things that come in to attack you once you kill them with antibiotics they, they are not there to, to to protect you then you're immunocompromised and and whether you take probiotics or not you have to keep flushing your body with them or they just go away you need to bind them back in. This is a project that should be done by NASA right now to protect their astronauts and help everyone else on the face of this planet. We need to map where the bacteria lives in your body because that's the only thing in your body that affects you at all. Where I have my issue is they say, oh, the hormones do this, and the, you have to have the gene to do this. Now, yes, absolutely, you have to have the codes, you have to have the programs, you have to have the workers. The workers are the bacteria. I don't care how many programs you have. I don't really have, care how much you eat. I don't care what you do. If the bacteria is not there to create the enzymes and catalysts and break down all these products, you could do it all day long. You've had zero help. You will have bowel issues. You have gas, you know, all kinds of gastrointestinal conditions, diarrhea, constipation, gas, all kinds of bloating. It's a nasty situation when you can't deal with 
the bacteria, I mean the, the stuff you're coming through your body. And the only ones that can do it is the bacteria. So as far as I'm concerned, they are the living part of you.